Hey, what's up? I'm Brandon and this is why I enjoy being alone. So in this technology age, right, like this day and age, there is a lot of people or things that want your attention. You know, your friends wants to meet up, your girlfriend wants you to hang out with her, your boss wants you to work overtime, <laughs> things like this. And it's pretty interesting, right? Like, some people might think being alone is bad. Like, it might be bad for mental health because, you know, we humans are social creatures. We need to socialize. We need... Human interaction is integral to our survival. Like, I think if you don't inter interact with people, we might suffer. I think that can be true. And I think that's something I need to do more often because I'm an introvert, right? And I'm in my main cave. I am super comfortable. But of course, I do go out in the sun, right? Come on, I'm not so down bad in my self-improvement journey. I'm still doing, I, not the best, but I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. So, how can you be truly alone, right? Like most people say, oh, I, I'm okay with being alone, but are they truly being alone? Because, you know, it, being alone can mean a lot of things, right? Being alone can mean you are playing video games, being alone can mean you are just doing your work, being alone can mean checking off to porn the whole day and you know, shit like this. So how can we be actually truly alone, right? I mean, you know, there's a lot of like very, very standard self-improvement practices, things like journaling, meditating, uh, either like some sort of like contemplative exercises. So for journaling, it's quite simple, right? You journal down your days. You can either journal down like what you have done or like what I think quite a lot of people do. They do this thing called the gratitude, gratitude journaling whereby they sort of put, wrote, write down three things that they are grateful for in their day. So of course, this journaling practice is very, very... It's very, very beneficial in the sense that as you write down your thoughts every single day and you actually look back at some of your thoughts in like the previous months and stuff, I think sometimes you can cringe, right? You can cringe back, oh my god, why am I thinking of these kind of things? But when you cringe, that is when you uh, you realize that you actually improve, right? Because you, you already disagree with what your past self have thought of. And right now, your present self, you think a lot differently. It means you have actually progressed from the past. So keeping a journal is essentially like a habit tracker for you. So I, it's definitely essential for everyone and this is why I started doing it for a couple of weeks now. And then meditation. Of course, meditation is great, right? Because that's where you are truly sort of like, you are focusing only on your breathing most of the time. So, yeah, our minds are usually filled with like a lot of needless thoughts. Like, it can be things that we want to do later. It's like our minds just keep thinking and thinking forward, right? We just want to keep moving forward, moving forward, moving forward. Like, what's next, what's next, what's next? That's kind of the problem, right? Like, by doing meditation, it gives us that 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes of time, of like, time where we really silence out all of those noise and really truly be present in the moment. And I think meditation is so crucial that this is something I'm, I'm starting to pick up these few days because I realize it's really, really beneficial like to really sort of cleanse myself and prime myself for the day, right? Because I shouldn't go to a... I don't really want to start my day off when I'm my mind is so messy and stuff. I'd rather go inside, go through a day to be present and have free clarity in my thoughts. So that's meditation. So for contemplation exercises, one of the things that I like to do, so I read this book called the No No Bad Parts. I forgot the author's name, but I think you can just Google No Bad Parts, right? You can find the book. So this book is something about like, we humans have sort of different parts about us. And now you'll be, might be thinking like, hey, wait, what the hell? This is not some Naruto shit when the Naruto got to talk to his, his nine tails. Like, we, we don't have a monster inside of us, yes? But there's definitely different parts inside of you that you may or may not have known. So, so like some quick example, right? Don't you find that your body or your frame of mind, they 
uh, they react differently and respond differently to different situation, different group of friends, right? And you also have like a productive self. You have a hardworking self that is really, really driven, very passionate. That's always there to like set goals and like get them done. And you also have your lazy, degenerate self that is like a total Jeffrey, not doing shit. So these are only like two examples, right? And there might be many, many more. So one of these, some, some practices I try to do, right, is I try to find an, an sort of a emotion deep inside of me. So it can be something like envy, jealous, envy and jealousy kind of the same thing. Envy, um, you know, anger, sadness, fear of missing out, things like that. So I also sort of like talk to this emotion. I try to imagine it and try to talk to them and try to find out where this emotion actually stems from because all of these thoughts that we have, all these different different parts that we have in our mind, in our body, they are actually, I think, cultivated and groomed in childhood, like our childhood itself. Like, you guys need to understand that quite a lot of thoughts that we have we have in our brain, right, are not necessary, necessarily ours. Like the thought in your brain that says you're not good enough or like you deserve to be bullied, you deserve to be mocked. Those are not actually your thoughts. Those can be the thoughts that, you know, are sort of like set into you through bullying, abusive parents, or just really, really bad childhood and really bad parenting and teachers. So yeah, I really recommend you guys, if you guys are sort of dealing with like a lot of different, different parts, you have a lot of different voices in your head, try to read the book called No Bad Parts and try some of the exercises they included there and I think that will really help you a lot. Okay, that was kind of dark, deep said okay one last point um to give so you know that was like the meditation part of it now it's like the more productive part right so obviously being alone can be one of your most productive time you know you can really work on your craft right you can work on what you want because you so i think most people right they're like oh let's do like a group study session let's do that and i think more than 80% of those sessions, right? You end up talking more, playing games, you end up just having fun with your friends, right? And the studying session, which is probably should be lasting about like six, eight hours, you probably study about two hours, and then you spend the rest of the time just having fun, playing around, you know. So I mean some people might work better in like a collaborative environment with like groups of people. There's definitely some tasks which is better. To be done in groups like definitely like some group projects or like some like projects where you need to uh, have like multiple different people in different industry definitely need to meet up and talk right so of course sometimes collaborative environment is good but most of the time like if you truly truly want to do deep work which is something very very rare these days you got to be able to work alone and just work really have the deep work for like two three hours in a row, right? There's no like baby, oh, Pomodoro technique, 45 minutes. And I mean, that's cool and all, but if you can't focus on like one hour straight, two hours straight, right? How are you going to get shit done, you know? And yeah, so that's kind of all, all I have for today. So like quick summary of the video. So how can we be truly alone through meditation, contemplative exercises and journaling and also check out the book by check out the book no bad parts and lastly being alone give you truly give you the alone time where you can really work on your craft so really cherish cherish the time when you're alone and then really really work towards your goals when you're uh, <coughs> when you're alone and then you know once you're done doing your work go and have fun man Take a chill pill, go out and have a drink or two. Go out with your friends, hang out, have fun. And yeah, and that's all I have for today. Thank you and have a great day.